Hello everyone, my name is Ike Brownridge and today I will be presenting my presentation on racism in sports and I will also be giving a speech. Okay. We all love coming together to play a sport that we love. But why does the color of your skin impact impact if you could play that sport or not? Or why does your the color of your skin hold you back from doing things other others may can do in the same sport? Or the way people may look at you as a whole? There is always stereotypes and perceptions of people given by other people without knowing the true meaning of what they are doing. But it is 2018 and all these type of things should be put to an end because that may only lead to poor decision making and we should try to go on a better path and not just look at people before we actually know what they're truly doing. It has been roughly 70 years since Jackie Robinson has broke through the racism barrier for black people in the sports world. 70 years ago, this issue was supposed to be the start on the end, but to this day, we continue to have racism in sports. However, we sit here today in 2018 with the same problems and it has been roughly 70 years and people should start asking themselves, what is it really? What is it really that is holding us back, holding us back and going forward? It is really something that is holding us back. According to my research from the University of Central Florida Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sports, acts of racism in sports in the U.S. increased from 31 in 2016 to 41 in 2017. And what I believe, and what I believe is the problem to all of this is the continue of poor communication and lack and the lack of poor and the poor decision making that people that people do to other people. Like you have you have Donald Trump who is the president of the United States who on live TV is 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 going at the whole black community and NFL that plays in the NFL. He says that they are disrespecting the flag. He says that they're not doing things the right way. He says that the things that they're doing, they shouldn't be able to play and provide for their families and friends and all things. The only thing that they are doing is standing up for, is standing up for their rights and a bigger cause, and not and not trying to disrespect the flag or, or looking down on people or trying to make a statement. But they just want to bring attention and cause to what is really going on. But you have people like Donald Trump, who is who is stereotypical, who is so stereotypical. He just bring down on NFL players, and then just trying to make it look real bad on them. But moreover, like I was saying, you have the Colin, Colin Kaepernick situation with the NFL where he kneeled down while the national anthem was being played. Colin Kaepernick stated from his own mouth that this was the reason why he was doing what he was doing. I am not going to stand up Stand up to a flag to show pride and a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. So what he really is saying is he would not stand up for a flag who devalues the black community and our nation and society. And I stand behind him, stand behind him on that 100%. And it's no, it's no reason why we are in 2018 and we are still having problems that that should have been solved a long time ago. People should not be devalued because of the color of their skin. Everybody should be looked at as equal. And that's all that the cause should be, especially in sports. When you're playing sports, everybody's trying to come together and have a good time. But what is it really? It's the racism. It's the people who, the negative energy that people bring in and the way that they do things. However, many others did not see it this way. They took it as they were disrespecting the flag, the country, and those who fought for our country. Another perception these people only wanted to see. They only wanted to see their way. They don't want to see the full picture of what people was actually trying to do in the cause. They weren't trying to see that. They were only trying to see the negative, but not the positive. But the negative that they were seeing was from their perception. That was never there. That was never the reason. 
Colin, Colin Kaepernick was blackballed out of the NFL. Not, he couldn't play in the NFL. It's not that he couldn't play the game of football no more, but it was simply because what he was fighting for and bringing attention to. The NFL owners, the NFL owners and GMs that run the NFL, they did not like, they did not like what he was doing. So instead, so instead of helping him with his cause, they took the love of the sport away from him. The love of the sport. And mostly because he's a black African American man and they feel like he should be standing up and he should do everything the right way. They feel like it's a privilege. They feel like it's a privilege that he is playing in the NFL. And that should not, and that should not be a reason why somebody is hold back. Moreover, moreover, Colin Kaepernick has not let that slow him down as he is still bringing in attention to racism in sports, but not just NFL. You have the NBA, you have tennis, MLB. He is bringing attention all over, and he should keep doing what he is doing. And to end my speech, I would like to say that the only way I think we will be able to get past this, this issue is with better communication between everybody and better decision making within our peers when it comes to racism in sports. And that's my speech. And now to my presentation called Racism in Sports. Okay, what is racism? The belief that one race is superior to all others. Prejudice, prejudice, or discrimination based upon race. And the pictures that we have here, you have when the white and blacks have the, the, uh, the two different word, the word of founders. We only serve whites, so that was probably a restaurant, a restaurant where they only serve whites and not and not blacks. And waiting room for color only, so you had a waiting room for colors and you had a waiting room for non-colored non-colored people. Racism in sport. The lack of diversity when, when it comes to hiring people of color, coaching, CEO slash president, and general management positions. As you see, the black is the blue, Latino is the red, and the white. White is green. NBA owners, 99.7. MLB owners, 98.0. And the NFL, 97. That is majority white owners in most sports. And you know, if it's majority white owners in all these sports, it will be a lot of racism. And I am sorry to put it that way, but that is just the way, that's just, that's just the way it is, and we just have to call it how we see it. Okay. How did we get here? Segregation in the late 19th to mid 20th century, men and women of color weren't allowed to participate in major sport leagues. Negro leagues were formed. So you know, you just had the all black, when I say Negro leagues were formed, I mean it was just a straight league of black colored people and no, no non-colored non -colored people were, were in these leagues. So that is how, this was the start. This right here was the start, okay? And these are some of the players that broke the color barrier. So these are these are players who actually went on to play with the whites, who actually was the first people to actually allow black people to actually play with others and show that it's really not about racism. It's about who's actually playing the sport and who's actually good. It, had, it should have nothing to do with color. You know, you have Jesse Owens with track, Muhammad Ali with uh, boxing. This is Jackie Robinson with the baseball. Um, I'm sorry. Um, the Texas Western 65-66 basketball team, and you have Ernie Davis with uh, football right here. Okay, and where are we now? Donald Sterling comments on black people in 2014. Colin Kaepernick protests for racial injustice in U.S. NFL and for its Rooney Rule in 2003. Okay, and the NBA, as you can see, it's majority African, um, well, it's majority African American players. The head coaches is so so. Majority owners, 98. White, the whites and the league office staff is 64%, 18 African American. As you can see, the diversity in the NFL also, if these are all kind of stagnant, they all kind of look the same. The whites are majority are majority in most of these categories when it comes to managers, majority owners, and elite office staff. Hmm, and as you see, they are majority, they are majority in control in the top positions. So that means they have a more influence 
and these are, and these owners, they are usually older. So using, using context clues, they, they don't really look at things from both sides. They don't, some of the owners, they, yeah, okay. And questions for you, for you guys. How can we come together to end racism in sports? For one, we have to come together. That's the first thing. We come together, and we should all communicate. Communicate, communicate, and come together to what we can come to the problem, fix the problem, so you know what the real problem is. Instead of one pe people thinking this and one people thinking that. No, we all need to come together and find the problem. Do not lack communication. We need to have better communication with each other and have better decision making so we can come to a problem to fix the racism in sports. Because there is no reason why racism should still be in sports. Racism shouldn't be, a, shouldn't be exist, period. We should move on from that. Everybody should come together. And that's how I think we should do that. And these are my citations, all my work cited right here. And that is my presentation. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you.